to family this is your boy Mehdi uh, this is my first video on the seeking crypto YouTube channel and today I'm I'll be analyzing a very interesting protocol called ODS now just a quick plug-in about my channel uh, this is a mission focused no hype channel where I bring you in-depth analysis and research which are fact oriented rather than moonshot promises why I thought ODS was interesting is that at all time high, the price was $5. Now it has fallen down all the way below $1. If you compare similar sectors such as Web 3.0 and you can see some of their competitors, not exactly the same, but similar such as Theta Network, which is around the fully diluted valuation of 6 billion, ODS with the current diluted valuation of 1 billion kind of seems cheap. Not only that, if you compare to some of the legacy competitors such as uh, Spotify, which is about 60 billion market dollar company, Audius operates in a very interesting space and has a capacity to disrupt different industries uh, across different sectors. So I thought because of that reason, it is an, an interesting protocol to analyze. And because of that, I'm, I'm just going to jump right into it. So just a quick overview, ODS is a decentralized protocol for audio content and it's built on top of Ethereum and is available on Binance and Uniswap. It also has some elements that are built on Solana, but for, for regards with this video, it's out of our scope. The mission of ODS is to disrupt the monopoly of streaming platform. Now this is very important. The big player in this pair act as a distributors where Creators use the platform they provide to reach fans and consumers, but Audius is a protocol that bypasses these. And I'll show you in the slide later why this is important. Now, when you bypass these middlemen, it allows creator and consumer to interact directly. And this is extremely important. If you look at the current dynamics, creators within the music industry only get 12% of the share in terms of the music they produce and a lot of different middlemen such as such as streaming companies uh, music groups and so on and so forth take a huge chunk of it and not only that the musicians and the creators do not even have the control in regards to how the music is distributed so if you look at uh, Spotify uh, I'll go decide which audience needs to hear which music so this two problems can be solved via blockchain technology and this is what audience is trying to bring uh, to the table as i mentioned earlier this graph basically captures uh, beautifully what audience is trying to do so as i mentioned earlier artists are only capturing 12 percent of the total music revenue and audience wants to change that so if you see this pie chart over here which i took from one of the podcast interview they did with uh, Delphi research you can see the platform cost and record label cost as being the major junk uh, these these costs are far more than the artist revenue which is just 12% now in my opinion this is absurd so if I'm just thinking if Audius is able to disrupt this model where let's say artists do not capture 12% but let's say capture 60% 70% or anything uh, double that what they are capturing right now it is very possible that artists will switch platform so think of it like this if they earn more from let's say combined from spotify apple uh, and they earn more on audius they will switch towards audius and they will start producing music there and once they do that the fans the listeners will come themselves and then you have a beautiful network effect going so for me this value proposition is very important and not only that you also have a music industry which is booming and i'll show you through some graphs where i even highlight the outlook of the industry so last graph kind of showed to you um, the whole music sector but if you just talk about the streaming music the streaming music revenue has been growing as you can see exponentially uh, so even during pandemic it did grow more than 20 percent and now if you look at spotify 
Their monthly active users also grew 27% from previous uh, 2020 quarter to 2021 first quarter. And not only that, if you look at the industry outlook from different uh, sources, the music industry for the next decade is expected to grow between 15 to 20%. So if you do buy audios, not only you are buying a platform which has optionality to overtake Spotify, for instance, or Apple's iTunes or SoundCloud, but it also has the potential, even if it doesn't succeed in, in try to uh, disrupt these sectors, or sorry, these companies, it has the potential to still grow at 20% or more than 20% since it's a uh, new company. So for me, that's also another interesting thing to look for in Audius. So despite music streaming booming, and if you look at the music industry overall, which generated 43 billion, as I showed in the graph above, why aren't like why aren't musicians demanding more money or fighting against it? Actually, they are. So first over here, you can see from the picture over here, uh, you have Taylor Swift, who was who was unsuccessful. Uh, she was unsuccessful in her fight. Uh, she spoke against. Spotify's unfair treatment in regards to revenues distribution, but she failed. And moreover, she had to go back to Spotify and you can like still see her music there. Uh, in terms of the UK, I found some statistics that 82% of the musician in UK earned less than $200 from streaming in 2019. And this was conducted by a poll by the UK independent body for music creator, uh, the Ivers Academy and the Musician Union. So you have a lot of discrepancy. Despite the sector growing, despite the industry booming, artists are not paid well. And they have raised their voices, but they have failed. So this could also be another catalyst why musicians could slowly but surely graduate towards decentralized platforms like Audius. Now, why decentralization of content and especially audio content is important is because the music and streaming royalties is at the crux of the issue. Firstly, the royalties, the way they're calculated, the way they're distributed is opaque. And the reason why it's opaque is that few entities control it. So you can see the chart over here. Uh, you can see Spotify and Apple having more than 50% of the whole music industry and then you have YouTube music Amazon music and the other categories is 13% so in terms of the brand share you have huge potential where where an entity like Audius can disrupt this model and can perhaps take a bigger chunk than what they currently have and and their their value proposition is also very different since they want to cut down all the numerous uh, middlemen and distributors to and increase the revenue of share given to creators. Uh, they have a very unique uh, distribute. Uh, they have a very unique value proposition, and I can see why they can capture a huge chunk of their market share. So let's just take a breather and recap what we have already covered. So the Audius protocol was founded to address some of the issues faced in this industry. You had creators not being compensated fairly for the streams. You have opacity in the calculation of royalty payments. You have confusion around the rights of ownership, basically who controls the music. And then you have multiple layers of unnecessary middlemen taking huge cut and delaying payouts to artists. So these are the industry problems. Now, how Audius is trying to counter that? Now, Audius wants to differentiate themselves from different streaming platform because they want to give the musician and their fans actual ownership and control of the audience platform now by giving these individuals greater say over how revenues are shared and distribution uh, and distributed they can disrupt the monopoly as we highlighted earlier by some of these big streaming companies and this is a huge factor for me and it could it could be a game changer now, going through the uh, blockchain uh, white paper, I saw the blockchain architecture, which appeared uh, very, very amazing to me and everything tied in well. Now, I won't go into the technical nitty gritties. If you do want to me to go into the technical nitty gritties of their blockchain art architecture, uh, you can 
like below and comment if i get more than 100 likes and more than 20 comments i'll make a 10 minutes video going through the technical architecture and kind of show you the beauty of their uh, ecosystem so just to summarize though you have four nodes you have fans sorry the fans are not the nodes but you have three nodes and you have two other stakeholders so you have fans that consume content you have artists that produce content and then you have content node uh, basically that hosts contents and and gives permission to access it then you have discovery node which is responsible for indexing the ledger and allowing users to query it and then you have a, a content ledger not a note uh, the content ledger which is the main ledger which contains the note registry and other important information i believe that content ledger is now being built on solana so i didn't go over the technical aspect of the paper but there are a few things you need to know because of the way the blockchain architecture is designed you do get some benefits so firstly you have censorship resistance uh, it's a censorship resistance and the content cannot be taken down unless the com unless the community governance uh, allows you to do so in the near future audience community governance plans to give artists full control over how their content is monetized and encourage them to take advantage of the permissionless nature of the protocol now what this does that mean is that this includes the ability for artists to issue their own token which they could use to further permission how their music is accessed an example for example a fan may only stream if they hold a particular artist token so their architecture allows them to do so now another thing is uh, you have all kinds of application that can be built using the api and you can uh, kind of see that some of the applications have already been built on top of on top of the on top of audius and uh, developers have incentive uh, they get audius token if they do make an app which is popular and it's amongst the top five used api uh, so you do get the uh, benefit So when evaluating a protocol or a project, uh, we don't want to look what's just happening now or what can happen uh, going forward. So if you look into ODS dashboard, majority of the content is within the electronic and hip hop genre. Now they have the capability to expand into other genres. And at the moment they have around 3 billion users at, and at its peak it reached about 5 million users. Now if the activity in other genres and genres pick up you have the potential of again a, a huge network effect where other participants will bring other more participants not only that they can also go within the realm of podcasts uh, which now has become spotify's uh, main cash cow so you do have a lot of uh, optionality within the product such as different genres and also inclusion of other products such as podcasts now on top of that you have also other optionality now so recently uh, they also have in built in uh, where, where they're also trying to create a, a, a social media around content right so now you have fans and artists that can showcase their collectibles on their profiles and artists may also issue nfts uh, to reward loyal friends uh, royal fans uh, with various item or experiences such as their exclusive album or their digital art or a ticket or any of the things they feel like that their, uh, their fans will appreciate they can also reward uh, not only reward their fans but they can also sell some of the nfts so there, there could be a huge marketplace for that that will further attract artists to uh, join the platform and again uh, if more artists join in then you have more uh, fans joining in and then you have amazing network effect which uh, for a music streaming uh, company or a protocol it's what all it takes uh, not only that since uh, other it, since it's an open source uh, project you have open apis that means the community members can use this public resource to build apps or apps and other interfaces uh, on top of on top of audience which other stakeholders can use and interact with this could not only capture synergies by enabling more innovation and collaboration but could also encourage community participants to proactively interact and create more value-added projects which will benefit audience 
Now, if you look into the dashboard, you can already see some of the uh, some of the third party uh, apps being built in. So now you have, uh, as you can see on the chart here, you have a, you have a WordPress plugin. You have a YouTube uh, to Audius importer where YouTube music can be imported to Audius. Uh, you also have music for gaming. So you have um, interesting applications being built on top of that. So this is also a very interesting optionality that in the future, if some of the open source projects and the community gets more involved, you can see interesting projects built on top of it. And that could enhance a consumer or a fan experience, which will further allow more people to join the network and hence increase the value of the token. So guys, when a project is amazing, such as the case of Audius, that sometimes also means that other people will jump in and you might not get a good valuation. Or the other issue is that you could have a lot of investors' interest and a lot of other people's interest, and because of that, the tokenomics gets distorted. So it's very important to not only look at valuation, but also tokenomics. So the first breakdown of the slide will be the supply side tokenomics to kind of make sense if, if the tokenomics is as attractive as, as the value proposition of the project itself. So firstly, at Genesis, uh, when audio tokens were minted, approximately more than 70% were distributed to team advisors and investors. And I'll tell you why uh, why they distributed that. Uh, if you look at the team and the investors in the later slide, they're amazing, the high quality names, even the investors themselves. But that said, it's still in my opinion, uh, when we talk about blockchain, it's still unequitable. If you want mass adoption, I would, I would have felt that the treasury and the airdrops could have been much bigger. So you could have like a bigger participation and a faster network adoption and mass adoption of the port protocol. Now, what will happen is when the investors and advisors, when they sell the token, not only will they have a pressure on the prices, but that's the only way more people can uh, get the audio token apart from the inflationary reward. Not only that, the supply is inflationary. Ideally, in, in the best case scenario, we want uh, very low inflation, or maybe in cases such as in the case of Binance coin, uh, it's deflationary where the coin supplies, instead of increasing, gets burned out, which is also the case of Ethereum 2.0. But in this case, uh, you do have new supply issuance, which uh, kind of incentivizes uh, the security of the network. And because of that, you have an inflation rate of 7% each year. Now, the other interesting aspect is the vesting schedule of the investors and the founders is a, has already started and in and in July we had uh, one one more shock so that's why you could have you can argue that the audience token took a beating so it could be an interesting time to buy now and then the next vesting schedule starts in October where you see the supply increasing over time uh, and all and the vesting schedule ends in October 2023. So for the next couple of years, you can expect some volatility since the supply is increasing uh, on the end of advisors, partners and foundation who want to go out because they invested in the project very early. They made a lot of money and for and for them, it makes kind of sense to kind of, uh, you know, enjoy some of the gains for liquidity purposes. They want to buy a, buy a new house or maybe invest in another project. Uh, so fair on them, though. Uh, but because of that, some of the investors could face uh, volatility, could be interesting entry opportunity, but could also be uh, bad for those people who bought this token at very, very high price. Because of that, now the token is seeing price pressure to the downside. We have to also see the demand side of the tokenomics. Demand side of the tokenomics features how will the token be used and it's very much aligned with the incentive structure of the network the value proposition of the protocol so in this case the native audio token has three core function first it will act as a governance token now within the audience protocol it will be required to vote on certain proposals or community decisions so the artists as well as the users uh, they can decide the future and the functionality of Audius. Very powerful. Then the Audius token is also used as a rewarding mechanism where fans, artists, developers are rewarded for adding value to the platform. 
So for, in for instance, as you can see uh, over here in this infographic, so those, let's say those who, so all in all, I'll just give you the summary of the team. The team is very strong. Uh, so the co-founders, one of the co-founders has crypto experience. It was, they, he was involved, the Ronald uh, Rumberg was involved within some of the Bitcoin project and a company called Backslash. His LinkedIn looks strong. He's from Stanford, good technical background. Forrest Browning brings another expertise. His expertise lies within the user interference and the, and how that kind of goes well with the product. He was also Forbes 30 under 30 recipient, also from Stanford University. They have a long team list where you have, they have covered the operation side, the engineering side, even sales and marketing. So I wouldn't cover all the team member, but just like few of them, which I thought were interesting. Not only uh, you have people from Stanford, but you also have from some some people from big uh, big companies. For example, Harish uh, is a staff engineer. He, he has a previous work experience in Microsoft uh, Cloud Storage, which is Azure Services. Then you have Michael. Uh, he's a senior engineer. He has worked in Amazon, and he has also worked with iOS and React application. Very very strong team. Now, in terms of advisors, the advisors are even better than the team. And I will say the advisors get 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, you have Dead Mouse. <laughs> it doesn't need any introduction if you're into electronic music. You have electronic music producer. Uh, you have uh, Avicii's uh, manager. You have co-founder of Twitch. You also have co-founder of EA Games on your board. You have a chief architect of uh, BitTorrent, so they do understand why centralization will be important. And not only that, they also have some uh, electronic music producer over here from EA, EA Music. Uh, and then you also have uh, some business people, for example, partner at Dragonfly Capital uh, and another person who is the managing director of Standard Crypto. So you have a well-versed advising team uh, both on the musician side as well as from the business side as well as from the uh, business development side if you look into Avicii, form manager and chief architect of BitTorrent so everything covered here in my opinion now if you thought advisors were interesting just have a look at the investors i think this is the key selling point for me uh, so in terms of the crypto vc you have binance lab no introduction needed coinbase ventures no introduction needed. Pentara Capital, Multicoin Capital, who have invested in 100, 200x altcoins before. Uh, very, very strong VCs know what they're doing. But more interestingly, you have a VC which doesn't normally invest in crypto, but usually focuses on equity uh, over here. Cleaner Perkins, he was a former early investors in Spotify. And if you look at some of the companies like DoorDash, uh, UiPath and other amazing companies they've invested in kind of seems like a very good VC to me. So all in all, the investors backing is solid for this company. So up till now, audios kind of seem too good to be true, but there are definitely some risk. And for some people, the risk might outweigh the benefits. So it's very important to highlight those risks. Firstly, there has been some observation made in recent months when crypto took a hit that the number of unique users have started to decline. At its all-time high, you had more than 4 million. Now you have just 3 million unique users. And in terms of the number of plays, uh, it has reduced a bit to about 6 million. And it has stagnated for a couple of days, last couple of days. So, so there is a risk that, okay, maybe audios is just a fad. Like it just comes and it goes and it's very, and they might not be able to capture the network effect, which is very important for streaming companies. Now, another risk is audio censorship resistance could act as a double-edged sword. So the protocol cannot prevent pirated or copyright material from being uploaded and consumed and cannot be forci forcibly taken down either. So community has to decide through governance uh, role, uh, through governance, whether uh, is this something uh, which is pirated or not. So that can also impact uh, scalability and this also kind of puts audience at risk of being positioning themselves as a decentralized SoundCloud, which we, if you know about the music streaming industry, SoundCloud had that problem of privacy. And when they tried to solve it, uh, basically didn't work. And uh, basically the user interface became shit. 
So as opposed to becoming a decentralized Spotify or Apple Music, they have a risk of becoming a SoundCloud. And as you can see from the picture over here, it's optional to put track ICRC and track ICWC, which I think are required if you want to make sure that the uh, music uh, cannot be claimed for copyright. So this is some, some of the risk. I, I don't think I'm an expert on this, but I think this is some of the risk that did pop up in my mind. Apart from that, uh, Audius also faces strong competition from other decentralized platforms such as Emanat, which is an EOS based protocol. And furthermore, you also have many artists who have recently opted to release and distribute singles and albums as NFTs. So you have notable examples, including Tori Lenes and Kings of Leon. So it must be uh, noted that NFT uh, released by these music artists have thus far been exclusive content as opposed to being used for wide scale distribution content, which uh, Audius is trying to do and, and ultimately established artists will choose whichever platform that enables them to monetize their work most effectively. So it is a possible that there is a combination of NFT and decentralized stream that will become a winning model. So in that case, uh, you have Audius winning because they have both, both the side cover, but that doesn't stop the fact that you do have competition within the blockchain sector itself. So not only you're competing with Tidal Music, Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, but you're also competing with NFTs issued by some of the artists as well as uh, another decentralized platform called MNET on EOS on OS. So guys, in this video, I haven't covered the price prediction. I haven't covered the valuation and I haven't done the crypto scorecard uh, and I've also not included uh, the recommendation whether I have put this in my portfolio or not. If you want to access all of these material and information in terms of video content as well as like a summary, uh, you could join my Patreon page where you can uh, have one of the initial subscription and you'll be having access to that. So let me just walk you through if you do become a member of my Patreon subscription, or what you'll get. So this is a 40 page report I prepared for API3, which is part of my portfolio. And over here, you can see that I go into depth with 40 page report with each and every aspect and competition, environment, tokenomics, valuation explained. So if I just go over the valuation side, uh, so if you do buy my subscription, you'll have a detailed valuation where you can be very confident in, confident in terms of the target price you can actually expect for a protocol like Audius. So let me just give you the valuation summary of API3. So it gives you an incentive uh, to buy my subscription. So over here, I did a relative valuation. I, I ran different scenarios. I did a probabilistic uh, scenario. Then I did a valuation based on the crypto market dominance. And then I also did an absolute valuation using a widely applied equation of exchange model, uh, borrowed from economics and popularized by Chris Boninsky using MV equal to PQ model. And I arrived at a target price. So for me, I believe this gives me more confidence in terms of my price prediction. And then I try to match that price prediction with technical analysis in terms of using trends and in terms of using some some of the key uh, chart patterns I'm using. So combining both of them gives me solid confidence in terms of whether the protocol will do well or not. Apart from that, I also provide, if I just go above, sorry. I also provide the scorecard. So you can see over here, let me just quickly zoom in. You can see where I've covered different dimensions of the protocol, such as value proposition, competitive advantages, technology, team and investors, future potential valuation and tokenomics. And I've assigned each category a certain score and using the weighted average, depending on the project, I give it a score where a score of 18 above is a buy, 19 above is a strong buy with larger portion of your portfolio and anything below 60 uh, is a short. So between 60 to 80 is a hold and anything below 60 is a short. So I provide you portfolio allocation, which gives you long ideas, which products to go long on and which project to kind of short in order to hedge your portfolio. 
and not only do I provide you scores but I also give you like a brief comment so if you don't want to do the whole research you can just like quickly glance and make up your mind all in all guys I can't tell you whether this audience is part of my portfolio or not you can get that information if you do subscribe but what I can tell you is that platform like Spotify extract from consumers and artists they, they basically are using them they're manipulating them for their own profit and the audience platform I feel is aligned with the customer and the content creator so through the use of crypto networks and distributed ledger technology their business model creates a positive sum game instead of zero sum so meaning they are trying to create a proposition where everybody is a winner uh, rather than how Tidal or Spotify or Apple Music is doing. For me, that's a powerful incentive mechanism for all the customers and content creator, and that could lead to a very strong network effect, which in turn could be their moat, which will be very difficult to beat. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my content. Please do like and subscribe so the YouTube algo can know who Seeking Alpha is and, and who Mehdi is, and I can keep creating these content. This was my first video. If you do have any feedback for me and if you have any altcoin that you want me to cover, please mention below and also do let me know what you think about Audius. Do you think it's a buy? Do you think it's a sell? Do you think it's a hold or do you think it's too expensive at this price? Whatever your opinion is, it will be valued by me. So please do comment below and I want to create a community where different people interact and give their views. It also helps me with my own portfolio. Thank you and have a nice day.